On Monday, both Nord Stream pipelines apparently suffered near simultaneous leaks. Russia's recent willingness to weaponize energy supplies and the fact that these leaks, which are pretty rare, occurred on the same day have aroused some suspicion. And Ukraine has already accused Russia of sabotaging the pipelines. However, it's not immediately clear what Russia stands to gain from such an attack, given that they could just turn off the gas instead, and there's been some speculation that it might actually have been the US. So in this video, we're going to be taking a look at the leaks, whether they were deliberate, and if so, who might have blown up Nord Stream? Let's start with the leaks themselves. The first leak at the Nord Stream 2 pipeline occurred on Monday morning at about 2am, 12 nautical miles southeast of the Danish island of Borholm. The second and third leaks at the Nord Stream 1 pipeline occurred on Monday evening at around 7pm, roughly 30 miles northwest of Borholm, meaning that the leaks were about 50 miles apart. Each leak is about a kilometre wide, releasing approximately 500 metric tonnes of methane per hour. And Denmark's energy agency expects the leak to continue for about a week. Anyway, these leaks were suspicious for quite a few reasons. First and most obviously, their timing. For obvious reasons, these pipelines are pretty strong, with a steel wall around 4 cm thick surrounded by another 10 cm of steel reinforced concrete. While these have been minor leaks, neither Nord Stream 1 nor Nord Stream 2 has ever suffered a leak of this magnitude. So three leaks in 24 hours is pretty, well, unlikely. On top of this, the fact that the leaks occurred 50 miles apart from one another rules out the possibility that they could have all been caused by the same event, and both the Danish Geological Service and the Swedish Seismic Institute recorded two separate explosions in the area, which is how we know the precise times of the leaks. Plus the fact that the Nord Stream 2 leak occurred just over 12 nautical miles from the Borholm coast, and therefore just outside of Denmark's territorial waters, would be a convenient coincidence. This means that whoever did it can claim that technically it wasn't an attack on Denmark's territorial waters, so doesn't merit a response from Denmark or NATO. Finally, the pipelines at the location of the leaks are only about 70 miles deep, which means that whoever did it wouldn't even need a fancy submarine. They could actually just do it with well-trained divers. Both Sweden and Denmark have already said that they believe the leaks were deliberate, but have been remarkably restrained in their criticism. Denmark said it was not a declaration of war. Sweden said it wasn't aimed at targeting Sweden, and neither have singled out Russia. Nonetheless, at first glance, Russia is the obvious culprit. The Kremlin has proven itself willing to weaponize energy, and blowing up a pipeline is exactly the sort of hybrid warfare we've come to expect from Moscow. However, it's not immediately clear what Russia stands to gain. Blowing up Nord Stream completely rules out the possibility of any gas relationship with Germany in the future which the Kremlin was apparently still holding out hope for, hence their implausible technical excuse every time they reduced flows via Nord Stream, instead of just saying, we're not trading gas with you guys anymore. It's also not immediately clear what extra leverage this gives the Kremlin above just, well, turning off the taps, which is what they've already done. This reasoning has led to some speculation that it was actually the US who sabotaged the pipelines, apparently to pressure Germany into taking a more hawkish line on Ukraine and perhaps to give NATO an excuse to get involved. This clip from February of Biden telling reporters that the US would be able to scrap Nord Stream 2 if they wanted to has begun circulating widely on social media. While this might sound like a lunatic conspiracy theory, some serious people have picked it up including a Polish MEP who posted this on Twitter, arguing that the US had done Eastern Europe a favour by destroying a pipeline which made them more vulnerable to Russian aggression. However, this theory is implausible for a couple of reasons. For starters, while Germany might be slower on arms shipments than the US, they haven't really got all that much tech to give anyway, thanks to years of below-par defence spending under Merkel. Second, the pipelines are going to be fixed in a couple of days. It's not like the Americans have permanently ruined them. But perhaps most obviously, it fails a basic cost-benefit analysis. 
Whatever advantage the Americans might stand to hypothetically gain from blowing up Nord Stream is massively outweighed by the risk involved. If they were found to have done it, they would undermine trust in the US for decades and probably spell the end of NATO. What seems more likely is that this is Russia threatening to destroy the other underseas interconnected cables that provide electricity and gas to Europe, many of which run from Norway to the UK and the continent. The attacks on Nord Stream occurred on the same day as the opening of another underseas pipeline, Baltic Pipe, which would run from Norway all the way down to Poland right next to Borholm and Nord Stream 1. The subtext here seems to be Putin warning Europe that, if they continue supporting Europe, then Russia will damage more interconnectors, which would be pretty catastrophic given that between 25 and 30% of its gas comes from Norway's underseas cables. Essentially, Europe's successful transition away from Russian gas has rid Putin of any leverage, so he's been forced into threatening cutting off Europe's other supplies. Regardless, we're unlikely to find out for sure who blew up the pipelines anytime soon, as both NATO and Russia have an interest in making it unclear who was behind it. Because, well, the answer would probably provoke a massive military escalation. So it's not exactly all hunky-dory. In fact, it's all pretty miserable. So if you want cheering up, then we have a bunch more fun videos too, like our team attempting the British citizenship test. Our blooper reel on Wednesday, Peru's Prime Minister. Oh God. I'm just gonna ask next door, I'll be back. Turns out there's a bunch of useless <laughs> next door. Our office tour and our interview with TV expert Scott Bryan about why Piers Morgan and Talk TV are failing. All of those videos are exclusive to the streaming service we made with our creator friends, Nebula. Now, don't worry, I know times are tough, and that's why it's good that Nebula is about a dollar a month if you sign up to the Nebula Curiosity Stream bundle. Here's how it works. We reached out to the good old chaps at Curiosity Stream and said, hey, you have a superb streaming service full of some of the most high quality documentaries available online. You want to team up? They emailed back saying, you mean highest quality, but sure. Now, I don't always appreciate pedantry, but they're right, and they put forward an offer we couldn't refuse. They said that anyone who signed up to their streaming service using this link, it's in the description, don't worry, would also get access to Nebula totally free. Now, I like free things, so we said yes. So if you click the link below, you'll pay less than $15 a year for Curiosity Stream and Nebula. That's just over a dollar a month. So get yourself exclusive TLDR videos, which will never come to YouTube, all our videos ad-free, and some videos earlier than they come out to YouTube. Sign up now. For legal reasons, this exchange is entirely fictional, and I honestly don't know how the deal was done. I'm not a legal kind of guy, so I wasn't in the room when it happened. Also, just because I made this up doesn't mean the videos aren't true. Everything else I say is 100% accurate, okay? Regardless, you should sign up.